Hey guys, how are we doing today and welcome back to another episode of the Automation Campaign. In today's episode, we will be continuing on the on the amazing uptrend of our company. So a couple episodes ago, we managed to we we hit a we hit gold, so to say. We produced two vehicles and both of which turned a huge profit. So in the last episode, we ended up facelifting both of those vehicles, and then we also made a new vehicle, the Razo, Razo. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce it, but it's a sports car, which is the first for the company, and I think it looks pretty awesome. I mean, it's a bit, it's got a lot of vents, but <laughs> I, I like the way it looks. It looks, it looks sporty. I'll put it that way. So really happy with that that turned out we haven't put that vehicle up for sale yet because in today's episode we are going to try and complete a lineup so we have the small vehicle in the veteretta we've got the regale for the more premium family vehicles we've got the razo for the sports car segment so all we really need is some kind of utility vehicle or yeah some kind of utility vehicle so um, yeah, so we're gonna have a look at utility and what I would also like from the utility vehicle is to see if I can also get it to hit the off-road segment a little bit just to give it a bit of an edge on both off-road and utility so these are bodies that I mean they look I think these are defender bodies aren't they so Land Rover Defender so I don't particularly want to use them I want to try and find a body that more suits the company in terms of the way it's shaped but it turns out it's not going to be very possible so actually you know what we could do since we've just completed the facelifts on the regale and the veteretta it is nearly time to try and produce new vehicles from them. So what we could do is we could make completely new, uh, complete the, the replacements for the Veteretta and the Regale. So I think I'm going to do that because there's a lot of nice bodies we can use. And while that's being built, we can wait a little bit until we get a car body worthy of being an off-roader. Well, for us, for our, for our company. So. I mean, we've got some bodies here, but they're all American, so we'll have a look. We'll have a look. I think we're going to also produce another van at some point. If there's a van, like a decent van body that's coming at any point soon. I don't really see any. <laughs> What's that? Um, but, ah, oh, there you go. What year is this? 1985. So we have to wait until 1982 to get the... Because we've got the technology on car bodies, so... But yeah, no. I think we. Do, I think what we're going to do is we're going to replace the Regale and the Veteretta because we've got these bodies now. Or even better, we might have another body somewhere here to try and replace it with. So let's see what we can do and make the new vehicles. Okay, so. I'm not entirely sure which direction I want to go in terms of the body. I do quite like these because you, they do look like you could. I could bring them forwards into into a more modern age. But a body that I really like is if I can find it. These ones, they are really cool. So we've got the small 2.3 meter variant here for the probably the smaller ver ver version of our vehicle. So and then we've got the longer wheelbase versions which we can use on the on the on the replacement for the regale so what we're going to do is we're going to do steel sadly but we're going to do monocoque something new for well not new i think the razo has monocoque but that's ah uh, this is awesome so we've got mcpherson struts now and we are going to use tra front transverse and we're still going to use just standard steel i think what we're going to do is we're going to wait until the next until the replacement of this vehicle to produce the what you call it to produce stuff with more galvanized steel or maybe even aluminium but that's going to be way in the future so let's see what sort of existing engines we have i think we're going to drop the inline three engines i, th I think they sort of passed their day they sort of passed their time so what we could do is we could actually produce a new uh, new engine 
And because turbos are going to come at some point, we could get these engines prepared for turbos, which would be quite cool. We could produce some really, really sporty ve versions of these vehicles. And I mean, I feel like I'm probably going to go with an inline four instead of an inline three to give the cars a bit more power because it is getting, they are getting a little bit more uh, heavier now. So let's have a look. So cast iron, do we go overhead cam? Do we go overhead cam? I think, I think we do. So we're going to produce the big, the big version of this engine will be probably a 1.8 liter, I would say. So a 1.8 liter. We'll do uh, just a two valve. We, there's not, we don't need anything special, but just a two valve. So we will then pr produce variants of this to make smaller versions of the engine. So. We'll do what? 7.2 compression, bring the cam profile down a little bit. Uh, no, we'll, st we'll stick with carburetor. We'll, we'll, we'll stick with a carburetor. So we'll do a uh, single barrel eco, but we'll do a twin carb to give the car just a little bit more power. So regular fuel, no leaded. <laughs> Leaded's are banned. So do we, can we hit a 6,000 RPM limit? We'll see. So, I mean, we're going to have to do a catalytic converter because... Um, what do you call it? Emissions. So emissions are coming down quite nicely. We're about 2,400, but we can tweak this and we can tune this. So what I'll do is we have the basis of the engine here now. So I mean, we could increase the cam profile a little bit. I don't think the engine would complain too much. And we could also increase this, I'd say. Yeah, there you go. Then bring the exhausts size down a little bit. I mean, I don't know why we're not producing as much. Uh, we don't have as much good as, a good as good a fuel economy as we used to. So a bit confused on that, but we can make things work. So I mean, that's not doing anything. for. There we go. That's where the fuel economy is happiest. So yeah, it's a, uh, what I'm going to do in the background is I'm going to tweak the engine produce its variants and then I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, so now that I've produced two variants of this engine, so I've produced, well, three in total. So I've got the 1.8 litre, which will be the big, the big engine. We've got a 1.5 litre, which will be our middle sized engine. And then we've got the 1.3 uh, 1 litre, which will be our small engine. Now, because this is the small car, I believe, that I'm producing here, I'm going to use the 1.5 litre as the big engine for the small car, if that makes sense. So let's go to bodies and... Is there a five door variant? There is a sedan variant, but we're gonna go with a hatchback. So sadly it's only three door, but it'll do. So let's have a look. So we're going to do manual four speed. Ooh, so we've got we've got a much higher top speed now, which is awesome. So I'm looking forward to making use of that for the car. So we've got radial tires, hard long life. 175s is probably all we want to. I don't know why none of the graphics are coming up. Don't understand that. Um, hold on. Let me let me try. Let me let me fix this real quick. Okay, so I have no clue what's going on. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to go through and produce the car. So we're going to use still drum brakes. I think. Actually, should we do a solid? We'll, we'll do a solid brake, a uh, solid disc on the front, just just to see what that, just see what happens. So we're going to do a basic interior with a basic AM radio. No no power steering, we don't need that just yet. And we're going to do standard 70 safety. Progressive twi twin tube, and there we go, we've got all our stuff. I was just being stupid. <laughs> I literally restarted the game. <laughs> yep, and oh well, it's it's all here now, which is brilliant. So now we can actually have a look at how the car's doing, so First of all, it was a good idea we went for, uh, what you call it, for solid disc on the front. So we're going to keep it like that. So let's make the, there you go, brakes are now 
better. I mean, twelve. I'm not. I'm not doing any twelve inches on the on the car. Twelve twelve inch rims. We, we'll do fourteen inch because we're balling like that. <laughs> fourteen inches of rim. So let's get the. It's annoying, but they don't like wheel spin, so we got to get the wheel spin down. We can keep it like that. So 12.4 seconds, 0 to 60 time, which is actually pretty good. And yeah, so what I'm going to do now, like every other time, is I'm going to finish tweaking the car. And then we will design the car. And then I'll be back with you once I'm done. Okay, so here we are just working with the vehicle, trying to make it something worth selling. So... The target for this vehicle is to try and get it to sell to a more uh, basic demographic, so a more to people who don't have as much money to pay for a car, so to say. Now, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a simple enough design that I could copy it almost, well, not directly copy it, but copy it over to the Regale, which we will be doing later on. And I feel like the design worked out pretty well. It has the wedge shape, which is sort of becoming a thing for this company, the sort of low front high rear uh rear end of the vehicle and no i genuinely really like the way this thing turned out it's, it's different and it it does look more 80s but it's no i'm, I'm very happy with the way this t thing turned out so you know i'll let you watch the rest of this and i'll be back with you once i've finished creating this vehicle Okay, so here we are and we have designed the replacement for the Vetoretta and it's also going to be called the Vetoretta because I mean that's how most cars tend to do it. So if you have a look at for instance the Opal or Vauxhall Astra, they have the 8th generation are coming coming out and I mean even before that they had Cadet and whatever but they ended up sticking with the one name for a really long time so I think we're going to do the same here. Now, in terms of design, I am actually, I actually do quite like this. It's, it's, it's a bit different. I mean, I've kept the wedge shape, which sort of the original Vetoretta sort of had, so, so to say, the sort of low front, high rear, which I feel like is all right. It's, it, it's the, it's the thing for the car. I, I can't really say much about it. It just look, it looks cool. Now, in terms of the body shape, I ended up realizing that with this body, you could sort of have a almost a coupe type of look, which I really dig for this car. So, and the rear, I mean, <laughs> it isn't the prettiest rear end in the world, but uh, the boost line, it ended up coming down just where this brake light is. And I did, I wanted to try and keep it away from the boot uh, or the trunk or whatever the hell, however you call it in whichever country you live in. But yeah, so ended up doing that I, honestly I'm pretty happy with the way this vehicle turned out now I did put this is the 1.5 liter so this is the variant Gente which uh, is a sort of a homage to the original vehicle and this is the 1.5 liter so turned out to be a pretty decent vehicle honestly because I mean almost 200 competitiveness score on family which is awesome. Family budget also love this vehicle. They could just about afford it. It's not really that much of a family car. But all in all, it worked out pretty well for this vehicle. So 
I also made a, a, a 1.3 litre variant of it. So the 1.3 litres here, it's slightly more favourable for the family market, I think because it's more efficient. But it is, it, it, it's alright. So we're going to go to the car factory. And what we're going to do is we're going to... <laughs> We're going to make a bit of a step for the company, I think. So we're currently, so we're going to use a large factory from now on. So we're going to go with a large one factory, I think. Let me see. So, ten thousand cars we will be producing. Hopefully, we can sell them all. <laughs> but it's going to be very expensive to produce the to make the factory. So, uh, three hundred fifty million. That's fine. So. It's going to be very expensive to make the factory, which, I mean, we can actually handle it. I feel like we shouldn't have too much of a problem. It'll, it'll be expensive over the long, over a long time, but once the car sells, we should be making a profit. So in terms of us actually making the car, 41 months. So make the car more reliable and suddenly we see that the car takes a bit longer to produce, but... I think this is fine. So 52 months, we can, we, we're happy with 52 months. Now the engine, we're going to go to factory. Do we have a large engine factory? Yes, we do. So we can go into here. We can go and into the large engine factory. And we just want to make 10,000 engines. That's all we really want right now. So we'll produce all engines in this. So what if we go with a medium three factory? That's 10,500 engines. So Let's go with the large one factory here as well, which is also going to be ridiculously expensive, but it means we can upgrade and expand in the future, which means we can we don't have to use another factory. So about 280 million, that's fine. So even now, even if it does come down to us not being able to take a loan, we should still be able to afford the vehicle. So let's make the engine more reliable as well. Bring down the automation a little bit and I mean we can do a tiny bit of learning there you go 52 months on the engine 52 months on the car which is perfect so we're going to sign off on this engine and we are already turning a profit before we even mess with any numbers which is super awesome so what we're going to do is we're going to bump up the price for this vehicle $1,000 uh, so we're going to do six and six point two thousand which Two and a half billion. <laughs> oh, that is, that is awesome. All right. <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. So this will be the replacement for the Vetoretta. So in total, it costs 700 million. So we don't need to take out that big of a loan. We're going to take out about 250 million, I'd say. So if we take, what, 32% out, we should... No, we're... 255 million which is fine we'll pay it over about 80 months which means 3.8 million in uh in per, uh, per month we have to pay back so if we're taking 255 million out we should still be able to cover it with our own finances so we have chosen to take our loan and we will accept so next what we're going to do is we're going to be replacing the regale so uh why, why, why is it not named the actual vehicle so doesn't matter so yeah we're going to be replacing the regale and then we should be able to continue with the timeline so let's get started on building the the replacement for the regale okay so what we want to do is we want to do steel monocoque steel same as we did we basically want this, the same setup as we did to as we have for the veteretta so we already know this is going to be the regale but what we're going to do is we're also going to call it, we're going to have it as a trim trim name as the Gente 18 because this is going to have the 1.8 litre engine in it. So we're going to take the existing engine of the 1.8 litre, which, I mean, it's powerful enough. It has, what, about 70, 80 horsepower, which, I mean, for the time is perfectly fine. So we're going to do a manual four speed. Actually, no, this is going to be a more premium car so a manual five speed so I feel like the way it is right now is fine so open differential radial uh, hard uh, hard long life tires we're gonna go slightly wider tires 15 inches is fine we're gonna go actually we're gonna stick with the bigger wheels with the bigger tires so 
Solid disc on the front, drums on the back like we had with the Vetoretta. Standard. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to see if we can go for luxury. I want I want to do luxury because I mean this car's targeted at a much higher demographic. So let's see what we can do. So family premium already love this vehicle. Family also like this vehicle, but they can barely afford it, which is exactly where we want to be. So if we actually have a look at markets, we should be able to see that premium and premium budget are starting to take an interest in this vehicle. So yeah, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm not going to bore you this time with tuning the car and everything. I'm just going to I'm just going to do it. And yeah, I will be back with you once I have done the vehicle. Okay, so with this vehicle, it was all about trying to get it to sell to a premium demographic. We've been trying to do it with this vehicle for two facelifts now, and this will be the third generation, uh, well, third generation, you could say. The third attempt at trying to get it to sell to a premium demographic. Now, finally, it worked. I'm very happy with the way this thing turned out. It does look very similar to the Vetoretta. Which I don't know is a whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it keeps the company identity. So quite happy with that. So yeah, now I'm gonna let you guys watch the rest of this, and I will be back with you once I've done that, once I've built it. Alright, so here we have it, our, <laughs> I mean it looks very similar to the Vetoretta, but trust me, in that's the only thing that's anything remotely like the Vetoretta. So this car is, I mean, big, I've noticed that it was very, it, it's very big, but, um, <laughs> I, no, genuinely I do quite like the way this vehicle turned out, because, I've actually managed to sort of hit the premium market. So when I go into the market, I've hit commuter premium, city premium, family sports premium, fun premium, premium, just in general, and even a bit of grand touring, but that's not really any, that's this car's not targeted for grand touring. That's a sort of a comfortable sporty type of, type of thing. But no, honestly, I feel like this vehicle's done really well. So we've got the, uh, we've got this, uh, manual version and then we also have the automatico or the automatic version which itself has a huge following so a, a load of a really high competitiveness rating on anything premium so I feel like we finally made it with this vehicle in making it a premium car so let's see let's put the vehicle up for sale and then we can see how the vehicle truly does. So this is the replacement to the Regale. So this is the Regale. <laughs> and honestly, I'm just I, I want to see. How, let's see how many vehicles we can actually sell. So we can actually sell a pretty decent quantity of these vehicles. So about two thousand five hundred a month, which honestly I'm cool with, unless I decide to go with a bigger. Yeah, come on, let's do it. I mean. We do ha we do have the we do have now the funding the chance and the chance and the luck and just we do sort of have everything behind us now so the vehicle does take a while to 
Oh, the vehicle does take really long to come to market. So we're gonna have to do a lot of. We're gonna have to pull a lot down from automation. We could, we have to put a lot of work into the vehicle to get it out on time. Seventy-two months was that six years? <laughs> oh dear. But engines are already sorted, and we're already making a profit without even putting the price up. So price is already at ten thousand nine hundred. So what if we do fifteen thousand, just roughly? Just an idea for the vehicle. So hold on. There you go. That's two point five billion with a B. <laughs> that is incredible. So let's see. So this is the automatic variant. So this is going to be a bit more expensive. So if we do fifteen five and fifteen thousand, I think I'm happy with that. I'm always making a billion in the first year. Well, we are nearly making a billion in the first year. So engine factory is fine. So yeah. How much is this going to cost us? I mean, we can pull down the loan to about 200 million. And repay back in about 2.5 million. So, put up the car for sale. And then we can go sell our car now. Alright, so I guess we start the timer now. I mean, once we hit... What what year? What year do we want to... What, uh, what year do we want to start producing other vehicles? So, two other vehicles that I definitely want to do is an off-road vehicle. Uh, or utility vehicle and a uh, more van like a, a sposter a reincarnate reincarnate the sposter so I mean we've got let's have a look at this body so this body is just a just a standard body really it's like the old it's an old civic body so to say but it does have utility and all that kind of stuff in it so that would be quite useful but I do there's a mini this would be quite quite a good utility body so what is this 1980 i mean 1980 is probably the realistically the earliest we can do it because we do also have this body but this is too american for me so yeah i think we're going to wait on this body which i mean it's still quite american but or this body i mean both of them still work but we'll, we'll make we'll make it work when it comes to it so what we'll do is we'll fast forward until we hit 1977 so after this Actually, we're going to do 1979. Or 1977, 97. Well, we'll see. So we fast forward the game a little bit now. We're still making a ton of money. Which is incredible. Oh, we have a problem. Engine factory has a quality issue. Uh-oh. So, severity issue, low. Chance of discovery, high. So, let's do... I think we should do a full recovery. So, let's do a full recovery. I mean... It's not the most amazing thing in the world, but we have to do it. So, we are still making 25 million a month, which is a huge number, honestly. It is really nice to see, but we are still making money. Actually, I'll be with you once, because this is quite boring now. We're just making money. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that's boring, but actually, speaking of money, we're nearly going to hit a billion. Which is absolutely awesome. So, if we just let it chug along a little bit. My computer isn't the most powerful thing in the world, so it may cough a little bit every now and again. But I see one of the vehicles has started, uh, one of the factories may have started production. So, yep, two factories have started production, uh, started being built. But we're about to hit one billion. Oh, there it is, we've hit a billion! We have hit a billion dollars. That is a turnaround if I've ever seen it. From near bankruptcy to a billion. And we haven't even passed 1975 yet. <laughs> so the story of this company is quite, quite incredible. But, okay, so our sports car has now been up, put up for sale. And is it doing well? So there is no engine. Ah, it's because we're not selling these cars anymore. So, so these cars aren't being sold anymore. But the Regale. So yeah, we're going to be losing a lot of money now. But we can deal with it. That's fine. We've got. We had a billion with a B, <laughs> which I am super happy about. So we're about to get some interesting stuff. But here we go. Twenty-eight million. Twenty-nine million. And we're still producing another car on the side, which we've barely taken. 30 million in a month. Oh my goodness. 
that is <laughs> it's bringing in 70 million a month i mean granted we have to there's a lot of car production that goes on on the side but 70 million so what we're going to do is we're going to actually you know what i'm going to end the episode there next episode we will watch as the regale comes out we will probably facelift the sports car the rezzo and the Vetoretta and the Regale. And then we will see what other vehicles we can produce on the side. Which I am super excited for. Because I mean just lo look at the money we're, we're making. So that's it from me. I would like to thank everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And goodbye.